Howard Dean, Terry McAuliffe, Joe Andrew, James Clyburn, Doug Wilder, Evan Bayh, Mike Easley, Lindsey Graham, Robert Reich, Gene Sperling, I'm Senator Clinton, Senator Obama. Obliterate them. What do you think of that language? Well, it's not the language that uh, we need right now. Uh, and I think it's language that's reflective of uh, George Bush. They have to know that they would face massive retaliation. That is the only way to rein them so in. So no regrets? So, no, why would I have any regrets? What I proposed is that the oil companies pay the gas tax instead of consumers and drivers this summer. But can you name an economist who think no, this makes know, sense? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm not going to put my lot in with economists. Is a classic Washington gimmick. It, it, it is a uh, political response to a serious problem. It's just a little bit of relief for the people that and are struggling and the truckers that are struggling day by day right I, now. I the gas tax is you know, granted, it's, it's, it's stupid and it's dumb, and, and I don't know why Hillary Clinton uh, kind of proposed it. Uh, obviously, it's distracted us. I mean, we ended up spending a lot of time talking about Reverend Wright instead of talking about gas prices and food prices. Uh, you know, what, what really changed was uh, a sense that uh, he was going to double down on the statements that he had made before. I, I think it's fair uh, for people to look at this episode uh, along with uh, all the other things that I've done over the last 20 years. Well, we should definitely move on. Um, and we should move on because there's so many important um, issues facing our country that we have to attend to. This shouldn't be part you of the know. argument to superdelegates anymore. Well, the campaign people, you should know, stop that? Well, people talk about it. There's no doubt it. they talk about it. When you start bringing up things that have nothing to do with the candidate, nothing to do with the issues, that's race baiting, and that's exactly what it is. Just like Willie Horton was race baiting so many years ago. It's not going to be an issue in North Carolina in the primary. We, we, um, we don't take that race bait. Uh, we, we know the Republicans down here, well, maybe you don't know, Republicans are running ads on that already. The intrusion of the media and Republicans into the sacred uh, relationship that uh, worshipers have with their spiritual leaders, I think is going to come back to haunt us. Then in his favorable ratings, you see a, a rise in the number of people who say he doesn't share their values. Um, so that's a problem for Barack Obama. I'm ahead in the popular vote if you include Florida and Michigan. He wasn't which on the ballot I, in Michigan. Well, that was his choice. And his campaign and the There's other the rules campaigns. Of the DNC, though. Well, but you know the rules. I said we shouldn't campaign, but there was nothing saying take your name off the ballot. Uh, I think the superdelegates are going to take a look not at momentary snapshot polls, but they're going to take a look at who's run the kind of campaign that can bring about change in America. Look, my I've been questioned whether I'm a Hoosier. I've been questioned whether I'm an American simply for trying to state my opinion as well. What they are not free to do, in my opinion, is to just outright reject or overturn without sufficient cause what may have happened in these various caucuses and these primaries. The person who finishes second in this will be very, very important for all of our constituents uh, to come together. The National Journal says that in 26 of the 29 contests you've been involved in, you have lost white voters who do not have college degrees. How do you connect with them? What's wrong? Well, you know, first of all, I think we got to give uh, Senator Clinton some cred credit. Well, that's poppycock. There is a concentrated effort to derive those voters away from him and to drive them to Hillary Clinton because many of them think that Hillary will be the weaker. Uh, her strength, she's a fighter, and I think people know that it's not going to be easy uh, to deliver the kind of results that they want. I think he's going to win both. I think he's going to win both because of this energy, this excitement. When you Real quick, Mr. United McAuliffe, States. is she going to win both? Uh, listen, I'm not going to predict today. I feel very comfortable where we are. You and I should talk, uh, Chris, on uh, Election Day. Well, I'm not. I actually have what he actually said. And if the Republican National Committee would like to pay for the whole six minutes, I'd be happy to do it. What, what? Uh, I've said publicly that, that John McCain said that he wants to keep our troops in Iraq for up to 100 years. He, he himself said that uh, some of that could be occupation. And when it comes to foreign policy, I think John uh, can put together the alliances that we need, uh, strengthen some alliances that have been frayed a bit, uh, that will help us uh, confront places like Iran. John's his own guy. Good luck making him George Bush.
We are very fortunate that Senator Bai carries his uh, cell phone with him at all times because for inexplicable reasons, our sound has gone out. But I, I, usually, I, I usually sound best when the sound goes out. Hey, Rush Limbaugh is asking Republicans to come out and vote, and vote for you in order to divide he, the party. He's always had a crush on me. <laughs> we'll be back with our, with our final okay. No, we'll come back with another segment here in just a second. Talk too much. I can't believe